Hey folks, welcome to the Jason Wright Show, where the mission is to improve always in all ways. I have a thought experiment for you today that I think you're going to like. I've opened a lot of training sessions with this very question, and it's it's interesting how the mind works when pushed in just the right way. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think for me right now. If I were to tell you, you have got to go to the moon, you have to go to the moon and you've got to do it by tomorrow. Okay. You've got to get to the moon by tomorrow. That is your challenge of the day. What would you do? Could you do it? That would be the first question. All right. Got your answer. Could you do it? Okay. Most people would say, yeah, no, Jason, I couldn't get to the moon tomorrow. But let me ask you another question. Let's say that I told you I have your daughter, your son, your spouse held hostage, and the only way I'm going to release them is if you get to the moon by tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then what would you do? Would you be able to get to the moon? And if your answer is still, no, Jason, I, I couldn't do I can't go to the moon. It's a stupid, ridiculous, hypothetical, it makes no sense. Okay, fair enough. What if I asked you this? What if I said, okay, before we even get to the moon, before we even get to whether you actually can or cannot, can you at least tell me one thing you would do to start the process? What is one thing? What could you do if, if, if this was the only way, would you just throw your hands up in the air and go, well, loved my daughter, but I can't get to the moon. I'm out. Or would you take a step? And if you thought to yourself, you could actually take at least one step to get you to the moon, what would that step be? Quick answer. Think about it right now. What would you do? Would you make a call? Would you, would you do a Google search? What would you do? You got your answer? All right. For the longest, this is really cool. For the longest, every time I would ask that question, most people would say, I'd call NASA. That would be their first thing to do. However, I just recently posed this question to a group and one of the uh, participants said, I would tweet, I would send a tweet that I have to be on the moon by 5 p.m. tomorrow or whatever I said, can anyone help? And I just thought to myself real quick, that was a, that's an incredible way that the world has changed, right? That's pretty remarkable. But the simple fact is, most of us, even if we know intuitively we're not going to get to the moon, we can't do it, we know at least one step we would take to try to get there if a loved one's life depended on it. Here's the point. Most of us get caught up in the, the total picture, the, 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 the final outcome of, could I go to the moon or couldn't I? And the answer is absolutely not. And that's it. That's where we stop. Instead of saying to ourselves, I honestly don't think I can, but if I absolutely had to, what would be the first step I took? And here's another thing I want you to think about in this, this, this thought process. If there are things in your life that you, that you really, really would love to achieve, but you have not achieved them, or you haven't even attempted to, you've just accepted that you cannot do them, then I would argue it's not just because you actually can't, but it's you don't want it bad enough. And I know that's hard for a lot of you to hear. It was hard for me to hear about certain things that I wanted to do. Because whenever, when someone says, yeah, you, you could do it, you just don't want it bad enough, then we're like, yeah, but you don't understand. I came from here. I only have this this amount of resources. I I, you, I have this struggle. I have this this mental issue. This 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 block in my mind. I, I wasn't educated here. I, I live in this place. We we start saying all these different things. We we start treating every single problem, every goal, every ambition that we think is just completely out of our uh, ability to conquer. We treat it as though we've been asked to go to the moon, instead of saying wait a minute. Instead of just accepting the impossibility of it, why don't I prove the impossibility? I think it's impossible based on my, my knowledge of this matter, based on how I could get there, based on how I could achieve it. I can't do it. It's impossible. It's like going to the moon. But if you can just take one step, 
just one step and say, but if, if I accepted for one moment that it might be possible, what's the first step I would take? That's what I want to talk to you about today. And I want to bring it up because I've been looking through again, a classic, I mean, a self-help, self-improvement classic called The Magic of Thinking Big. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, there it is. This is an old book. And as a result, uh, David Schwartz, PhD, he, he wrote this book and it is a little bit dated in some spots, but let me tell you something. This is the book. I first heard of this book from Tim Ferriss. It's one of it, all of the guys that people like me and probably you, if you're listening to me, you know, not that I consider myself in the company of Tim Ferriss, but look, we're, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably a self-improver of some sort. You, you actually care about trying to get yourself a little better than you were yesterday, right? Okay. So that's, that's the vein I'm saying this in. I have heard from, uh, James Altucher from Tim Ferriss, several others that I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting right now, maybe even Seth Godin, talk about this book, The Magic of Thinking Big. And here is one of the things, here's a, there's a chapter in here on how to think and dream creatively. And here's what it says. Believe it and it can be done. That's basic to creative thinking. Here are suggestions to help you develop creative power through belief. Eliminate the word impossible from your thinking and speaking vocabularies. Impossible is a failure word. The thought it's impossible sets off a chain reaction of other thoughts to prove you're right. So that goes back to what I was saying. Instead of saying it's impossible and then all the reasons why you can't do it, again, I don't have enough education. I don't have the resources. I don't live in the right geographic location. Instead, Put all of that aside and say, what is one step I could take to inch me, even if it's a, a centimeter closer to actually achieving this, what is that one step I could do? I could send a tweet saying, hey, I got to get to the moon tomorrow. Can anybody help? NASA, my daughter's life is on the line. I've got to get to the moon. Is there anything you can do to help? There's one step you can take. And once you start asking yourself, what's the one step you can take to achieve your goal? Then all of a sudden you start focusing on, then what's the next step and the next step. And before long, you've taken something that you, you had already chalked up as impossible, can't be done. And you've started figuring out ways to do it. And that's the cool thing. Your mind, once you start, once you just start thinking about the fact that there's one step I could take, then your mind will have an amazing way of coming up with another another and another. So instead of accepting all the reasons it's impossible, start to think of the one tiny thing you can do to start convincing yourself that it just might be possible. And let me tell you something. Much has been made of the minds of people like Thomas Edison, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. These these individuals have inc have created incredible companies, products. It's just it's it's mind blowing. But the reason why they've done it is because they didn't prove themselves right about an impossibility. Instead, they set out to see. They, they they set out to prove their hypothesis. They took the scientific method on something they really wanted to achieve, and really the scientific method is to prove a hypothesis wrong. Right. So we we like to think that. Okay, I have a hypothesis that X is true. So therefore, I'm going to set out to prove that X is true. Well, that's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. The scientific method starts to test the hypothesis. How do you test the hypothesis? You try to prove whether or not it is right by first seeking all of its flaws, testing whether or not it's actually correct. That's what you do. If I say I can bench press, 250 pounds. If I go in to do a test, I'm going to say, I'm going to put 250 pounds on there to prove either one, nope, you can't because you have failed, or two, yep, you can because you actually did it. We're going to test it. So what you and I need to be in the mindset of doing is instead of proving to ourselves that we're right about an impossibility, instead, let's test that hypothesis by going and seeking ways that are contrary to it to figure out if, in fact, it is possible. That's exactly what Elon Musk has done. He, he, is, he said, I want to go to Mars. I want to figure out a way to colonize Mars. Anyone else would say, that's impossible. 
Elon Musk is spending his life and his fortune proving that that hypothesis is either right or it's wrong. So be willing to take that very first step. Next, think of something special you've been wanting to do but felt that you couldn't. Now, make a list of reasons why you cannot do it. Many of us whip whip and defeat our desires simply because we concentrate on why we can't when the only thing worthy of our mental concentration is why we can. This is so hard for me. I'm going to I'm going to tell you right now. It is so easy for me to tell you all the reasons I can't do a thing. But but I will say that one of the greatest assets I've ever had in business is being able to say to to not take the initial that's impossible as an answer. I, I'll never forget whenever I bought my first business, I didn't have the money to buy it. It was in an industry that I had never been in before, which was real estate. It was in a town I'd never lived in. I had no family, no friends. Uh, I I didn't have the money. I mean, every everything on paper said this is an impossibility. I didn't accept that. I, 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 I fought and I looked and I was like, I strategized. And by the way, I negotiated the purchase of this company as though I already had the solution in mind. And I didn't, I really didn't. And, but what it did by not accepting that it was impossible and improving myself, right. And then, nope, can't do it because of this. Can't do it because of this. Instead, I started thinking of ways that, well, I know that this can be done somehow, some way. People, I mean, and look, a lot of it was admitting that people had made much greater acquisitions under much more dire circumstances than what I had. And so I just started, I I thought to myself, how can I, what's the first step I can do? Well, the first thing I did was, I I remember the, I, I, I didn't have the money, but the equity was sitting in the piece of real estate that I was buying. So I first said, well, I wonder if I can borrow the equity out of this piece of real estate I'm buying to actually leverage to purchase the company. And and I won't go into all the details. You can read my book, Push Play, Take Your Life Off Pause. Plus, I've described this story in other podcasts. I won't bore you with it. But the bottom line is, even my banker, whenever I proposed that to him, he said, no, you can't do that. No, the, the guy that's selling you the company is never going to accept that. He's not going to let you borrow money out of his asset and then take a second position on the note. You're going to give me the money you take out. You're going to owe me money. You're going to owe him money. And he's going to be in second position because I'm not going to let the bank be in the second position. He's not going to do that. Well, guess what? He did. And I bought my first business at 28 years old with no money and walked away from the closing table with $90,000 in working capital. Now, anybody else that basically is a sane and logical person would have said, if they looked at that deal, they would have said, and many did say, you can't do that. That's just not, my banker said, you can't do that. But by God's grace at that moment, I thought to myself, there's got to be something. But you know what really did it for me? I wanted it bad enough. I wanted to get out of corporate America so bad. I wanted to stop traveling all the time. I wanted to be home with my young daughters. I wanted, I wanted the life that I now have, which is, which is creating, owning businesses, being an entrepreneur, being serving my community, doing all these things that, that, that really painted that I had painted as a picture of a life I wanted to lead versus just a job I wanted to have. And so, my why became big enough that. I would figure out the how. And that brings us to that that comment I made earlier that if there's something that you really, really want and you haven't even figured out that first step to call NASA, to put the tweet out, to call your banker, to have the conversation with your wife, to just sit down and, and put on paper that, okay, I've said this is impossible. But I'm going to play my own contrarian for a moment and assume that it just might be possible. What would I do first? It changes everything. And it's really quite remarkable. So like I just read here in uh, in the Schwartz book, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big, 
removing the word impossible from your vocabulary is something that I highly, highly recommend you do. Whenever it comes to business, when it comes to dreams, goals, and ambitions, most of the impossibilities reside only in your head. They're created, but the impossibilities are created by us. We do, we're the ones that make it impossible because we're not willing to take that very, very first step. So remove the word impossible. Instead, put if possible. Take impossible and replace it with if possible. Because if you start to say, okay, everything in my mind, the, the initial reaction is that's impossible. But if you will replace that with, but if possible, then I would have to do this first. And it changes everything. It will change the way you look at every single problem, issue, ambition, goal, whatever you might have. Carol Dweck even talks about it as it relates to having a growth versus a fixed mindset when it comes to relationships. If you have a couple that has fallen out of love and they determine that it is impossible for us to ever restore any of the passion and the romance and the love and affection that we once had, it's impossible. We're both, we're, we're both have this fixed mindset and it can't happen. Then most likely the relationship is done. But if both of you come together and you go, look, I'm looking at this thing and I see no way that we're going to make it. We can't even stand to be in the same room with each other. I don't know that we will ever be where we were, but I do believe it's possible. And if it's possible that we could at least start to find a little bit of our way back to each other, what would be the first thing we would have to do? Just that little spark of a growth mindset of removing impossible and putting in if possible and then saying if possible this is what the, this is what we'd have to do first that can restore a marriage so what i'm talking about in the entire book of the magic of thinking big and the reason why it's the, it's a perennial seller just like carol dweck's work with growth mindset is that the Power of Positive Thinking by Napoleon Hill. I think Napoleon Hill wrote that one, right? All these books, the reason why they resonate with us so much is because they, they, they remind us that most of the impossibilities that we face each and every day are, are possibilities that we make impossible. Not the world, not our resources. There is, there is example after example of people who had no business achieving what they did. Tom Brady had no business becoming the greatest quarterback of all time based on his physical attributes, based on where he was drafted, based on his high school performance, his performance at Michigan. He had no business. At that time, if you would have asked Tom Brady, Tom, do you think you're going to be the greatest quarterback of all time? Tom Brady, I would suggest, would have would, might not have said, "Oh yeah, that's that's what's that's what's on the horizon. I'm going to win Super Bowls. You'll I'll I'll be a legend." But what Tom Brady, I can almost guarantee you, he he said was, "If it's possible, I'm going to have to do these things." Nick Saban, who just retired, if you were to ask him 20 years ago, will you be able to be a coach? as legendary as Bear Bryant, will they want to put your name on the stadium alongside of Bear Bryant's? Saban probably would have thought to himself, I, I don't, I can't even fathom that, but if that's possible, I must first do this. See, that's the thing that people who really remove this idea of what's impossible versus what's possible is that it's not that they just have some wide-eyed, ridiculous optimism of anything's possible because I say it is. What they all know is this, is that there's at least, even if they prove themselves or right in that their hypothesis of that's an impossibility and I was right because I set out and I did the steps and I just, it just couldn't happen. What they know is that even if that proves to be impossible, the one thing that is there or 
all of these existing possibilities of at least exploring whether it truly is impossible or not. And so that's the message I want to leave you with today. And a lot of the reason why I like to talk about this is because, you know, another thing that I discuss a great deal on the Jason Wright Show is health and wellness and fitness. And, and many of you, you're struggling with some fitness issues, you, whether it's your weight, whether it's a heart condition, whether you're like my daughter and you're a type 1 diabetic or you're a type 2 diabetic and you think you're never going to be able to live a life in, not relying on, on insulin shots or whatever the case may be. So you just see all these impossibilities for your life. And I don't think you can truly reach maximum health without first removing impossible and focusing on the little bitty possibilities that stacked upon each other and compounded will make what was once impossible an absolute possibility. I think that's incredibly crucial and important. So as you go about your day, I hope that you will, you will remove impossible and replace it with if possible. If it were possible, the first step I would take would be to improve always in all ways. Yeah, I know. No, just ha- ha- I couldn't help myself. I hope this is helpful. I hope it gave you a little bit of encouragement. I'm Jason, and I'm out.